Hello, I'm Katie Brethwick. Welcome back to the Opera Garden, a celebration of horticulture and musiculture in this fabulous setting where Garsington Opera is hosted in the glorious gardens of Wormsley. In our last two episodes, Charlotte Tremlin, the head gardener here at Wormsley, showed us the abundant environment of the walled garden. This week, we're moving to this garden, gently nestled next to Garsington Opera's theatre, and from which this series gets its name, the Opera Garden. Today, we'll be looking at how this space was designed and how it's developed over the years, adorning so many of Garsington's performances. Charlotte is then going to show us how to make up some pots with riotous colour and intoxicating aroma. Finally, we're delighted to have soprano Louise Kemeny with us this week to perform here in the Opera Garden. So let's raise the curtain on this episode and go find Charlotte. I'm Charlotte and um, welcome back to this series and here we're in the Opera Garden which is the garden that was, the series is all named about. So originally this space was the home farm um, vegetable garden and um, flower garden. Uh, so, and there was a huge greenhouse where I'm standing um, and that was used to grow lots of tomatoes and things for the family. So it was the original garden before the walled garden was finished. Um, and then in 2010, when the opera were approached to come here, uh, we then pulled all that garden out, removed the greenhouse and built the garden as it is now. And it was designed by um, Hannah Gardner, who was the head gardener at Garsington Opera. Um, and I think her brief was to bring a little bit of Garsington Manor to Wormsley. So hence why we've got things like the Fastidia at Ewes um, and the sort of square borders with um, all the planting mixed in. But she's made it much looser and um, uh, more naturalistic planting than was at the formal gardens of Garsington Manor. We've got some lovely Mediterranean lavender here. This is um, Lavender Grosso, um, really lovely free-falling um, lavender. Um, we've also got lots of roses in here. We've got the beautiful arching um, Steeper Gigantium, which makes a lovely movement and again, so it makes it feel, feel really fluid in here. We've got a load of mixes of roses in here and behind um, over there, we've got a beautiful art rose arbor with Sanders White on it. Again, we've got one of those in the walled garden. We saw that earlier in the series. Um, and on the back, we've got a rambling Kifsgate rose, which has made it fill completely. So yeah, we, we spend a lot of time working in these gardens and um, wanting to make them look completely perfect for the night of an opera. So coming the build up to opera, uh, the opera season, we're here, you know, sort of three times a week working in here, preparing the beds, making them look really beautiful. And then through the opera season, I'll have somebody in here another three times a week, just going through, making sure that everything's deadheaded. So once the opera started, it's mainly deadheading and weeding. And obviously we all know that there's loads of weeds in gardens. So we try and go around and keep an eye line is our priority so that people don't see weeds coming up through. <laughs> so this year, um, in past years, we haven't been able to get through and do all the irises and divide all the irises. And over here, we've just started dividing them and pulling them out and making them so that they're less clustered. And so then they'll flower much better next year. So the white one is Frost and Flame and a blue one, which is Jane Phillips. Um, and so we've been able to take those out, divide them and then pot them on. And then we'll be able to replant them again in the um, new year. So through here, We've got some lower planting um, here, um, so with the Achelia, which all supported, and then going into the Verbena banariensis, this lovely purple here, um, works really well with the steeper. And then behind the Philictrum, which is coming up even taller, and then a lovely Flomis skirt around there. So it just kind of makes your eye go up and down and through the beds. Um, and then lower here, as I was talking about earlier, is the 
Nepita coming in here, a really lovely um, skirt there. This year, one thing that we did do this year to change the whole thing was we were able to Chelsea chop everything. So we went round all the Nepita, cut it back early on, and then it's given us a flower later. So in previous years, we wouldn't have Nepita flowering now. You go in in beginning of May and you cut a lot of your um, perennials like phlox, um, sedums, and Nepita back to the ground and it, and it delays their flowering. So their flowering will be later, but they'll also be stockier plants. So today, um, I thought it was, it's the perfect time to take lavender cuttings. So thinking for your next year, um, you can take some hardwood cuttings from your lavender plants and then put them in some gritty compost and then you've got some plants for next year. So I thought I'd show you how to do that and a late season flowering pot. While Charlotte is getting ready, let's enjoy some music, shall we? And a few years ago, we had a wonderful production of The Marriage of Figaro here. And one of the wonderful things about this garden is how often it becomes part of the proceedings on stage. And at one point, the gardener ran in to complain that a young carabino was fleeing through his geraniums. Let's enjoy that production now from the 2017 Garsington performance of The Marriage of Figaro. Oh. 
vostre dunque saran queste carte che per teste porgile a me sono in crapula sono in crapula figaro all'erta figaro all'erta dite un po' questo foglio cos'è è tosto tosto ne ho tanti aspettate Sarà forse il sonnario dei debiti o oh, la lista degli asti. Parlate e tu lascialo. Lasciami e parti. Parto sì, ma se torno troppo tardi. A me, a me, non devo dire. Lascialo. Parto sì, ma se torno troppo tardi. E parte. Dunque... Questa è la patente che poc'anzi il fanciullo mi die. Per che fare? Mi manca. Mi manca. Rispondi. E l'usanza. Soviati con fondi. E l'usanza. So I thought we'd um, do a late season flowering pot. So I've got um, a really lovely geranium. This is um, Boff Snowflake. And I love the fact that there's a variegation here and the beautiful pink flower. So we will use that as our centerpiece in our pot. Um, and around the opera, we do about 180 pots around the opera site. So we start making those up in February, really. Um, and some of them that are perennial, we can leave over winter and we just add to them. So we then deliver all of these pots. And this is one of the ones kind of pots that we would do for the opera. So as you can see, this one is incredibly pot bound. So I would spend a bit of time just teasing out the roots just to, otherwise they'll just stay in that one thing and take the crocs out of it, because I've already got crocs in the bottom of my big pot. Make a hole, pop her in, and she's gonna be our baseline. And then I thought I'd add um, some, some Verbena bernariensis, which we, oh, that one's cool. Let's go with that one. Um, some Verbena bernariensis that we, again, have got in the garden here. And again, these are terribly pot bound. They are desperate to get into a bigger pot. And so we'll put some of those around the outside to give us a nice airy picture. And then I've got a scabious, and this is Fama White. Um, and scabious is this little flower here. Um, and this is a white one. And that will give us lovely, late into the season, it will give us till about October, and we'll have some lovely flowering. And we just keep building it up around the outside teasing our roots out. So these were grown from seed um, last year. Um, but Verbena bonariensis is quite temperamental to go from seed. It likes to be put into cold and then warm. Um, so bear with it. It can take about 30 days to germinate. So bear with it when you're growing it from seed yourself. It will come. <laughs> you have to be patient in gardening. And again, you see, look, these are nicely pot bound. But it won't matter, they'll be really happy once they'll just race away in here now. And that just gives us. And then we'll just pack, backfill with some soil all the way around. Gives us a, a nice base. And sometimes it's easy to use a pot and you can just pop it in like that and pack it down. Keep turning the pot so that you've, make sure you've got enough soil in and all the way around. 
and deadhead the geraniums as you're going along you know the flowers will come off and if you keep deadheading them again you'll get more and more flowers the more deadheading you do on these plants the better and they'll give you something gorgeous and the scent from the geranium is really lovely or just put it by a doorstep and every time you brush past it it'll bring off the scent and there's a really lovely lemony smell um, and that was originally what geraniums were used for they were used to line paths and ladies skirts would brush along the paths and the scent would come up and of course when we were the great unwashed in the medieval times that would have been a really pleasant smell <laughs> i would just give that a little water and then when you popped it in place give it a really good water um, and then water that if it's really hot every day if it's not just give it a water every three times a week and that will keep flowering through so that's one thing I thought I'd show you. And the next thing was lavender cuttings. And I thought we could do some lavender cuttings. Now's the perfect time. July is the perfect month for that. To think about your plants for next year, to make yourself some new lavender plants. And so you need a really gritty compost for lavender cuttings. So I've mixed that compost with some nice grit and when you're taking your cuttings, you want a non-flowering shoot and you don't want it just soft wood, you want the going into the harder wood um, so that if you use a soft, just a soft cutting, it will run away with you and put lots of roots on, but it will die very quickly. So you want a little bit of the older wood. And so in here, I've got some lovely shoots in this lovely lavender plant here. And I'm just gonna take a cutting like that and so I've got some really lovely old wood there and I will just take off the leaves off it give it a little cut and just pop that in the side of your pot and you pop them around the side and the reason you pop them around the side of the pot is so that there's a little bit of warmth and there's a little more free draining for that cutting to root. Lots of people use hormone powders to root them. We don't, we just put our cutting straight in and we do enough of them so that if we do have some failures, then we've got enough of them. But when you're going round the garden collecting your cuttings, co collect them, but put them in a plastic bag before you put them, because otherwise they'll dry out. This one I've just taken straight from the plant and put in. These are some that I prepared earlier. And you can just see they've still got a lot of moisture on them and they were cut about an hour and a half ago because they've been in a plastic bag and then the best thing to do with those is to mist those two or three times a day um, you can put them into a plastic bag that covers it and gives it a nice little misting area put that somewhere warm with some sunlight you want to have probably um, sunlight in the morning and not so much sunlight in the afternoon just to give it a little bit of a push and once they've rooted, you'll see that the growth will come. You can pop those little individual plants up, put them in their individual pots, and they'll grow on a little bit this, this autumn, but they'll put on loads of growth next year and you'll have as many plants as you take cuttings from. It's been so lovely to have your company. I do hope you've enjoyed this mini series, The Opera Garden. It's been such a privilege for me to enjoy these surroundings and I really look forward to you being able to come back and for us to enjoy it together. For now, let's enjoy some music. Louise Kemeny performs live from the Opera Garden. I sow with the seeds of love It will blossom on in the spring it will blossom in April, in May, and in June, when the small birds do sweetly sing. My gardener was standing by, I asked him to choose for me. He chose me the lily, the violet and pink, each of them I refused, all three. The lily I did not like Because it does fade so soon The violet and pink I did both overlook And so now I must bide till June In June there's a rosy bud 
bad and it runs all over me oft times i've been kissed by those red rosy deeps till i gain to the green willow tree the willow tree will twist and the willow tree will twine and i wish that i was in that young man's arms that has so 